paperwork, textbooks, written tests, handouts are becoming obsolete nowadays with the spreading of new communication technologies. The pace of it is so fast that scholars cannot catch up with the rapid changes. There is no unanimity in what to do with this technology, how to fully benefit it. Still, there is a huge misunderstanding among the teachers, educators and professionals to what extent they can use information and communication technology, ICT. Is it enough to send emails or there is something else to be done? What is the reason for using ICT if there are reliable books or students can obtain the information from the internet on their own? One important point for my country, Russia, is the educators' unawareness of how to integrate in the EU educational system to correspond the requirements of the modern society. We exist in a situation when, apart from uh, the statements of political leaders and organizations, to cooperate, there are still deep chasms to overcome. We all need unified regulations on what to consider ICD in education and how to provide it. We will not rediscover America by stating that ICT nowadays affects society, be it workplace or private life. It is everywhere, school, university, industry, I dare say even kindergarten. Hence, it is important to keep in mind the extent of its implication for education. Now, when almost everybody has an e-device, we have to deliver ICT idea as a method of teaching, not just equipment. The latter understanding uh, is rather widespread even among the university authorities, who may consider the classrooms being equipped with PCs or OHPs as the top of their business. However, education and technology are different in their function. Technological tools must be consistently renewed, upgraded, which means uh, that they are short-term and at the same time education is a long-term process. Being a short-term tool inevitably means being expensive. Education almost everywhere in the globe is uh, always expensive and needs to cope with immaturity and instability of expensive technology. One important obstacle, but a necessary one, is the requirement to install only distributed disks. This is an indisputable memento that it should be tackled as carefully as possible. At this point, it is needless to argue about the must of highly qualified technical staff to be able to do any necessary upgrading without hesitation. As our experience shows, it may take a good two or three weeks before changes have been proved by the institution authority and the staff start working. The more infrastructures develop, the cheaper the access to it should be. But we need not only a cheap access, but also a reliable one. Now that many universities have their own local web, uh, it is absurd when two dozen students uh, are writing a web test simultaneously sometimes might create huge problems of data saving or crash the test. It is a shame for a teacher when he or she has to apologize for the troubles occurred. It minimizes the effect of teaching process not to say anything about the image of the teacher himself or herself. The Internet does not necessarily provide the kind of information needed by the education system. Whereas education requires high quality, consistent information, the Internet gives access to a virtually unlimited amount of information of various interests, which therefore has to be sorted. It is sometimes not easy to choose between the worthy educational sites and their copycats, which most certainly may provide us with junk. We need some facilities to avoid the users being swamped by the mass of information. Well, ICT is now being used by many people who call themselves ICT professionals. Concerning their ability to turn the PC, microphones and OHPs on and off, they are real professionals. But modern society and reality is more than videos shown on the wide screen. Major changes are needed in the role of teachers and their expertise needs to be developed by regular use of computers, teamwork and comparing notes among colleagues. Primary school can be satisfied with what it gained via ICT. Can universities be as lucky as that? 
We will not agree with many colleagues unfair, unfairly considering that ICT is going to substitute teachers at schools and universities who see the school of future as a cyber school, empty classrooms and students comfortably sitting in front of their monitors, sipping tea or coffee and the teacher's voice from the speakers. We dare say that ICT is not going to replace the traditional teacher, but it enhances education, it fosters curiosity, encourages discovery and experimentation. What teachers use widely are PowerPoint presentations. They give lectures and homework, they ask students to demonstrate their knowledge in ICT via PowerPoint. To develop the use of ICT, training must be provided on several plans. Now on the screen you can see some of them. It is well explained why secondary school teachers have no great interest in training, which is focused exclusively on the technical tools rather than their subject. But why some university teachers do not display any eagerness towards new teaching tools? Great caution is needed in dealing with the upheaval which ICT is causing in the educational world, and many pilot schemes will therefore be required. In its recommendations for uh, priority action, the EU report on the 27th of January 2000 first underlines the need to make the best use of a store of knowledge which is constantly uh, being developed. Uh, this requires three types of across-the-board action. EU countries have passed a long way to cooperate uh, sharing ideas and vision and establishing of a virtual European educational area. Other non-EU countries need assistance to integrate into that very virtual system. The potential benefits of ICT must be made available to all and care must therefore be taken to ensure that access is as equitable as possible. ICT may, may be absolutely justified when used for distance education. The primary purpose of using technology is to share knowledge and facilitate learning. The knowledge may be shared collectively with an entire class through a given technology, or it may be focused individually on one student through a different technology. Each learner has a unique style and a distinct competency. After the manner of Indiana Commission for Higher Education, the USA, we can classify educational technologies as two types, uh, delivery mechanism and learning resources that you now can uh, watch on your screens. With growing of the number and variety of all the means and tools, there is no doubt that limitations and certain laws are to be imposed on, in the field where the material is too vulnerable, i.e. where we come across with copyright and at the same time, we have to bear in mind another privilege, the needs for, of the educational community. The new technology brought some new problems, the fragmentation of information, knowledge and culture, uh, new literacy and computer uh, literate individuals, the construction of a new reality and new ways of approaching it, interactive forms of thought, organization and work habits. In the environment of continuous learning, professional competence and skills are constantly changing. The key in the information society is learning to learn, um, i.e. the key is education and not the amount of knowledge learned, but the ability to use knowledge and to be able to find the essential knowledge from the wealth of information and be able to apply it in another context. According to Dr. Carlos Garcia, uh, the main differences between distance education and classroom education are these. Many educators fear the development of a more flexible, more dynamic and more attractive course. Technological developments in information management and communication allow the first applications of information systems geared to teaching in the transmission of information. Multimedia technologies are considered to be the new computer revolution in the teaching-learning process. 
This includes creating environments that integrate the different media used by men to convey a message such as text, graphics, images, sound and video, plus a fundamental issue is the user's interaction with the system. The advantages of using ICT can be seen from the following perspectives. People's Friendship University of Russia in general and the Foreign Languages Department at Law Faculty in particular uh, try to be in the mainstream of new trends. We widely use different types of multimedia, though as everywhere we also have some problems among the staff not able to use new systems uh, or unwilling to use. This approach is quite tardy, while those who are ICT friendly are able to attract not only their students, but uh, their parents, administrators, and even unexpected groups of students from other institutions. We welcome chats and forums at the teacher's side, but we will as well welcome webinars, which at this stage is not as spread as other means due to its money inconveniency for the university administration firstly, and then computer illiteracy of the teachers. The spin box of a teacher's site is a fair index of the teacher's popularity. An advanced in ICT teacher not only has a copy of lecture hanging in the site, but also a lot of other information, links and cross-links for their students. We make films with the students, video of the lectures, role plays and presentations, uh, to watch them later and discuss the problems. It is an excellent tradition of ours to hold a conference in March each year at uh, People's Friendship University of Russia and to take part in other conferences sharing our experiences with our colleagues. Technological evolution requires active role in shaping human evolution. One should bear in mind that ICT is a progressive tool but also not to forget some vulnerable issues, such as copyright or ethic issues, while using the Internet. It is the duty of educators to develop human resources with moral and ethical standards on par uh, with technological developments, able to develop and implement techno technologies needed to meet our demands and thus overcome the situation of being mere importers and consumers of information and technology. ICT should be used actively and efficiently. This way it is possible to reduce the cost of ICT, while incorporating into the world, at the same time cultural identity should be preserved. Whatever the cost, ICT has become and will be an inseparable part of our education. Our task as educators is to remain in the vanguard of it. Thank you.